Man, what a cool morning. It's been raining this whole morning. So I just got back from sending my kids to school. And I actually wanted to do this um, since yesterday, but I just came up with a really, really interesting article that I wanted, you, wanted to share with you guys. And I wanted to highlight this thing because I think it's something that is so important that we all know and what's going on in the EOS R5 um, scheme of things. So I actually found this article in EOS HD uh, and EOS HD is sort of like, a, you know, it's a website that actually has so many things um, that, that involves cameras and rumors about cameras and all that. So um, I found this article in there and I thought that it's something that I definitely wanted to highlight in, uh, in one of my videos. And it's so interesting because in this article, I, I want to share two articles. And in this article, a Chinese user modifies Canon EOS R5 to improve heat management. So he was, there's actually a Chinese engineer who's also a user of the R5. He decided to actually take the R5 apart. And what he discovered was really, really interesting. So um, I'm just going to go to the section where he starts to ask questions after he actually disassembled his R5. And these are the, some of the questions that popped up basically after he actually disassembled it. And I find it quite, I mean to say the least, it does seem a bit fishy. But anyway, um, also just to bear in mind that everything that I'm saying right now is not coming from myself. This is purely from what I'm reading and I've got no reason to be hating on Canon but it's just interesting. You know, so yeah, I thought I wanted to share this article. Anyway, so he asks, he starts asking these questions. Let me just shut off my phone because it was ringing just now. And he starts asking, if the processor, of course, the processor of the camera, if the processor truly does get overly hot, why at the very least doesn't it have its own thermal pad to ensure the reliability of the part? No, so he's basically asking a question that it's just so strange that there's no thermal pad on the actual um, CPU itself. So that's really strange. And why do the RAM thermal pads cover two thirds of the processor with sloppy placement? So he's also questioning why are things looking like it's done really, really sort of like haphazardly, considering that this is something that is going to generate a lot of heat. So it just seems like, you know, it's not really done um, in careful sort of like thought, you know, th there hasn't been really proper careful um, placement of such uh, a, a, an important and critical thing. So that's that's also something that's really interesting. And also he starts to ask, why did Canon see fit to put thermally conductive material on the back of the EVF, but not the more heat critical CPU? So that's really interesting. Why didn't they actually put any thermal pads um, at the back of the CPU, but in the EVF, they actually did that. So, you know, again, it seems quite strange. Also, he starts to ask, what's going on with the firmware? He says, is it actually measuring the degree Celsius of the CPU or imposing an arbitrary countdown limit? So what he's trying to say is that it just seems like no matter what happens, no matter how long you're actually going to be using your camera, even if you're not using it in video mode, it seems like the clock has started to tick. And that's quite strange because they were always telling us that video in video mode, the clock would start to tick according to when you started the video. But now what he's discovering is that it just seems based on the firmware that the camera actually has, it just seems no matter what happens, the minute you turn on your camera, the clock starts counting down, whether you're doing video or photos. So another interesting article um, besides that one that I wanted to highlight was um, from Mr. Andrew Reed of uh, EOS HD. So he has, he has sort of like an, um, did some testings with his uh, EOS R5. And, and um, what's interesting is that he also used some tools um, in terms of an application that um, software developers are given by Canon to use to check and monitor uh, on EOS system cameras. So one of the tools that, that, that Canon actually gave uh, software developers is a tool that allows them to actually monitor the temperature of the camera. So what was really interesting is that when he actually did some test in, uh, in 4K or 8K and all that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway, he did those tests he actually discovered that most of the time, the camera did have time to actually cool down. But for whatever reason, the 
the the camera still maintained that it still wanted to be off even though there was time and even though the reading from his application was actually showing the fact that the camera has already had already cooled down so it just seems to him according to him that something seems a bit fishy why should the camera not be able to record more when the even the reading from the app itself that they have as software developers for Canon your systems is sort of like registering cooler temperatures and he was even sort of emphasizing the fact that you know he would understand if something were to be heated up to 90 degrees in fact 90 degrees is quite a normal operating temperature even for microchips even for computers so it just seems kind of odd okay so these are some of the things that he sort of like conducted you know in terms of tests so what he did was he we observed okay he says here we observed 30 celsius 86 degrees fahrenheit with the camera switched on from cold for the first time indoors with ambient temperature about 27 degrees. We observed 46 degrees Celsius after five minutes in stills mode with no video recorded and one photo, right? We set the intervalometer to take one still every five minutes, one still of JPEG, right? The temperature remained at a very steady 46, 46 degrees. How, 46 degrees Celsius. However, after 30 minutes, the video restricted status activated in stills mode with no video recorded whatsoever and the internal camera temp still records at 46 degrees Celsius. Now it just seems a bit like a smoking gun. It's just so odd that it's almost like there's a bit of a can crippling oh, hammer that's oh, going on right now that doesn't allow this camera to do beyond a certain time limit. So anyway, I just thought I wanted to highlight this uh, particular thing because I thought it's really interesting. And I want you guys to have a quick read, I mean, if you manage to, because I think this is something that really should be um, addressed, you know. And I know that the, there has been an announcement of a new firmware that will actually um, bring the recording times higher and all that so I'm looking forward to see what Canon is really going to do whether they're really going to handle what this particular article did make mention of or whether it's just going to be marginal sort of like um, changes because based on what this article is trying to say is that um, it just seems like there is something quite strange that's going on within the firmware itself. It seems overly conservative. It seems like no matter what you do, the clock is going to tick, even though you haven't even shot any videos with your EOS R5. And I just thought I wanted to sort of like share this article because I thought it's so interesting and it's something that is really good that all of us know so that we sort of like bring it up voice ourselves up so much so that hopefully in the hope that Canon does sort of like pick up on this news and they sort of like decide to do something with it. Anyway, that's all for this morning. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick sort of uh, yeah uh, article reading so to speak. So anyway, see you guys in the next video then. Oh God, oh, oh no, why?